morning talking about how God chose each and every one of us to be in relationship with us even while we were not doing our homework. I think Pastor Phil said, Dr. Phil, I'm sorry. <laughs> even when we mess with our sisters and our brothers, even when we lie to our parents, kids don't lie to their parents. So what kid do you know? <laughs> oh, no, my daughter's right there, man. <laughs> <laughs> he chose us to be in relationship with us. And Christmas is the grand celebration of the beginning of that gospel. God sending His Son Himself into our reality, our world, in flesh and blood. What an amazing story. It just gets lost. It gets lost in the hubbub and commercialism of Christmas. Christmas needs to play a supporting role to the story of the gospel message. If we forget that Christmas stands in that supporting role, as John the Baptist reminds us that he was doing, then we too run the risk of making Christmas more important than the Christ it's supposed to celebrate. Just like John was one who was calling people to prepare themselves for a relationship with the Lord, to make the path straight and easy, Christmas can be a tool for us a tool for us that we might share this gospel message with our family and friends and co-workers and neighbors who perhaps don't have a relationship with God through Christ, the Christ of Christmas. Christmas can be a support for us, a way to strike up a conversation when we're at these parties. We can begin to talk about what Christmas really means to us as we declare our faith in witness to the love of God in our lives. Not in a way that browbeats, but in a way that invites Speaking of inviting, what better use of Christmas is there but to invite people out to church to celebrate, even if it's that once a year. I don't beat people up for coming out only once a year. I don't. I know of pastors who have told jokes about people who only come out on Christmas and Easter in their Christmas Eve sermon. Not a not a bright man. <laughs> but anyway, it, it's it's. I don't I don't do that. They would be welcome. It would be a place where they can hear the gospel message of Jesus Christ at Christmas when we should be talking about these things. Christmas can support our efforts to bring the gospel message to a world that needs to hear about the love of God. Who knows a man named, or at least heard of a man named G. Campbell Morgan? One hand, Margaret, thank you. Um, yeah, uh, two hands, okay, Chris, thank you. Yeah, he was a... Uh, uh, a very, very uh, popular preacher in his day, uh, and he probably is unfamiliar to most of us. Obviously, he's unfamiliar to most of us since one, two hands from um, But it says it right here. He may be unfamiliar to you. Anyway, uh, <laughs> he was—he was—he's from the generation. He was born in England in 1863, and he felt an early call to ministry. As a boy, he would set his sister's dolls up and practice preaching to them. Strange child. No. <laughs>
so that all might believe through him. As Christmas comes once again this year, may it not take away all of your time so that you can spend time talking about the gospel message with those you love. May it not take away all of your money so that you can spend some money on broken, hurting people who are dying in a world that is so desperate. May it instead, Christmas, instead play a supporting role in helping you, helping you see the light, in helping you to testify to that light so that all might believe through your testimony.